This is part one of Armature Construction. I'm Dino Crisanti. I've downloaded a um, character sheet that we're going to be using as a blueprint for making your armature. When you come up with your own character, you need to figure out what the proportions are uh, to make sure that your armature stays within the confines of the design. Uh, this is very, very important. This is the map that we're going to be using to make the armature fit. So the first step we're going to talk about uh, for figuring out what wire to use is to realize that when you build your armature, uh, you're going to be starting with thicker wire at the, bo at the bottom or the base of the character because one limb has to support the entire weight of the puppet for doing walks or steps or jumps. Um, and as you go further up the character, you're going to be using thinner and thinner wire. Now instead of relying on one thickness of wire that could break easily, what I do uh, from some techniques that I've learned over the years from friends and from my own experimentation is that you use several layers of wire. And what we're going to do is be using this 3 16th wire and we're going to double it up. So the first part we're going to do is figure out the legs length um, and we're going to use two layers of this thick wire and then we have this thinner wire here that's going to be basically our backup wire. And we're going to build it all straight and parallel. We're not going to bend it into the shape we need until afterwards. Um, remember that you're going to need an extra length, at least an inch or two, at the bottom of each leg in order to be able to uh, use wire to construct the feet, which will be in a different section of this video. So we're going to start by measuring this character. We want the wire to stop at the hip and then go beyond the foot by at least an inch. Okay, so that's going to be five inches. So I will cut two lengths of this wire. Now you want to make sure that this wire is nice and smooth and clean and there are no nicks on it. Whenever you use tools to cut this, you want to make sure you don't scrape up any of this area right here. So what I'm going to do is measure out 10 inches, which is right about there. And I'm going to carefully cut this. Uh, and now I'm going to do this a second time, uh, but again, do not bend this up, do not scrape it or scratch it, because this is very important. These areas here are where the character is going to be walking and kneeling and stepping, so you don't want this stuff to break. Okay, now we have our wires cut for our legs, and we have two of the 3 16th and two of this thinner wire. The next step is to lash it all together. Now you're going to have them all tied together in parallel and to help keep them together we're going to use a little bit of this vinyl cement. You can also use rubber cement if you want or even spray mount. But you're going to brush a very very thin layer of this on to the wire. And then the next step will be to uh, use thread to lash all four wires together. And what that does is it makes the whole thing one piece so that when you start to bend this wire, it starts to move more like the tendons of an arm. And it, it makes for a very supple, smooth bend rather than a springy bend. So it makes your animation a lot easier to do. So, here we go. You don't need much, so you don't want to make this very sloppy. You're going to start by making sure all the wires are, are in parallel and straight together. And you're just going to do a liberal, but not too heavy layer of this. I'm going to switch sides real quick and, and put some on that end. Okay, and then you want to make sure you cap this because this stuff tends to, tends to evaporate very quickly. Now that you've covered this with some adhesive, we're going to take some regular thread color doesn't matter and you're just going to cut a short length and you're going to make sure all the wires line up at the end like, like that and then you're going to start lashing the string around the wire. This will help keep the wire from separating once you start building your, your armature. It'll also keep it from separating uh, when you're animating as well. And that turns this wire into a really, really nice, secure piece for the legs of your character. Uh, if you were to have the one wire, like I mentioned earlier, it could break. And then to repair a puppet is, is a very big pain. 
So the having multiple layers not only supports your character nicely, it uh, protects you from having any breaks. So you have kind of a backup system of, uh, of wire. Now the ends can just be woven between the wires or you can let it dangle a little bit and the adhesive should stick together. So that's the leg. The next step we're going to do is do the same thing by measuring the arms. And then we're also going to need a small piece for the spine and then a small piece for the neck. Every time you make all these pieces, especially the limbs and the neck, make sure you leave the wire good and long because we can always trim it down. It's harder to add wire, uh, but it's easy to take it away. So what I've done here is I've measured the length of each arm and I also made sure I had enough space to go across the chest. It's very important to have the width kind of fill in the puppet so the width of the hips and the width of the shoulders are incorporated into the armature so your character can move naturally when you start animating it. So I've done, uh, I've done multiple wires for the arms, for the spine, and for the neck. Now because we want the arms to be easier to move than the legs, I've gone with one thickness of the 3 16th wire and the second thickness, or the second wire that I've added is four layers of this thin wire. Okay, it does sound like a lot, but what happens is um, not only does it give you backup in case anything breaks, it just makes it easy to pose the character and not for the arm to sag. Um, now for the spine, I went with two layers of the thicker wire, the 3 16th, and just one layer of uh, thin stuff. This is very, very customizable depending on the character you're building. If you have a very tall, lanky character, you'd have to use different wire or different thicknesses. Short and squat characters with short legs, you'd be using less wire and thinner wire because there's less weight for them to support and it's a little harder to bend short limbs. Everything is customizable. This is kind of a guideline for this particular character. And I think he stands about seven inches tall, which is a good size for a character like that. So the next step is to brush adhesive on each of these and to wrap thread around that. Okay, so um, now I have the wire for the legs, I have wire for the arms, for the neck, and for the spine. They've all been covered in glue and wrapped in thread. The next step is going to be bending this wire to match your drawing. We're going to start with the legs. So. What you want to do is you, find, you want to find the center point of the wire that you have. So I know that this is 10 inches long. Just to double check, there's five and five and a half. So we're, this is 11 inches long, so I'm going to go to five and a half, which is the center point. And I'm just going to bend it right in half like that. Now what that does is it creates these super long legs, which is not a big deal at all. Having it too long is not a big deal. But what we have here is we need to make a, uh, a flat area in the center where the hip joint is going to go. So again, not using any tools, just using your hands, you kind of want to make a right angle like that. And then you want to make another right angle like that. Now you want to try to keep the legs at the right length. Right now I have some string coming off a little bit, but we can fix that later. Um, so right now you can see that the legs are a little bit wide for this drawing. So what I'm going to do, which really helps, is to have a little bit of a bend in the center of this wire. What happens once we st stick this armature together, what we're going to do is use uh, some epoxy putty, which I'll talk about later. But epoxy putty is this plumber's putty that starts off as a clay after you mix the two parts together and then you pack it around here and once it hardens, it, it makes all the different wires you have into one armature. So it really kind of needs um, something to grab onto. And right now it, it has this straight line to grab onto and it could break out very easily. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of a dip in the crotch area here. And you can just do it by hand. But it, has to, it just has to be a subtle little dip. It doesn't have to be very impressive. Um, but that's what we kind of need. You can see that little bit of a loop right there. 
And what happens is once that clay is around there, that epoxy, and you try to start bending this leg, it's gonna bend here at the wire and not start to spin in the hole that's going through the epoxy. So that's very important. Um, you're gonna do the same thing at the arms. And I'm just kind of bunching it up just a little bit more. It's a little bit more severe, but really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stay within my drawing. Because right now, you do not want your armature to exceed the width or depth of your character. So you're going to make sure your armature stays in the right proportions. So next step will be to uh, bend the arms. I'll do the arms next. So again, you'll find your center point. So this is six, seven inches long. So we're going to go at three and a half, which is right here, and we're going to bend it. And again, we want the arms longer than they need to be. Although we're going to trim them later on and do the hands and wrist joints separately, we want to make sure we have a nice flat in the center here. So again, I'm going to do this little loop. So I have kind of a little dip right there. And I'm going to kind of create the width of the shoulders. Now still, these wires are long enough to make it past the wrist, which is very important. But having that dip, also very, very important. If this string starts coming off a little bit, uh, like near the tops or bottoms, it's not a big deal. Um, because that's gonna be covered in epoxy. But so right now we have our arms and we have our legs. So if I were to set this aside, this is what the armature would look like. It's very simple. You notice that I'm not bending these wires around a lot. I'm keeping all these lines very straight because every time you bend a wire before you start animating, it's one less time you get to bend it in, in, the, in front of the camera for your film. So be very careful and cautious. Do not use any sharp tools around any of these areas. So the next part I want to do is the spine. The spine's a little bit different. What we're going to do, no, I'm sorry, this is the spine. Uh, the spine's a little different. What we're going to do is make a little bit of a uh, kind of a, a loop right there. At this point, you can use a tool. Um, at the ends of something, especially the spine, which seldom breaks uh, for most puppets that I've dealt with in the past. But you're going to make a simple loop right there, and that loop's gonna go around the wire, all right? So that's the bottom loop, and the top loop is up here by the shoulders. So you kinda wanna make them, you wanna hold your finger there to mark where it's going to be, and then bend it over. So you're kinda making a really soft S shape. Now, if the spine is way too long, you can, you can trim it carefully. And then you have your spine. Now, the spine is not doubled over. Um, it's, it's just as hard to bend the spine as it is to basically bend the legs. It's just slightly easier. But it'll support the weight of the character, but still be able to get you some movement when you start to move his upper torso. Okay, so the next step is, now that we have these pieces, is we're gonna start taping these in place. And I'm gonna use this back drawing to do that. So I want to put my legs here. Okay, and you'll remember that the legs shouldn't go past the crotch, it should line up right there. And I'm going to use some masking tape. Now the masking tape is going to affix to the paper drawing. If you have a drawing of your character, I suggest printing, you know, scanning it and printing it out um, because this one will basically get ruined working on your, on your puppet. So now this doesn't move, it's immobile. Okay, that's very important because we don't want the wires to move once we start putting epoxy on. Now you're gonna take this area right here and use your spine and you're just gonna loop through the leg. Okay, it doesn't have to be tight right now because eventually there'll be epoxy there, if you can see that. Okay, so this doesn't have to be tight. It can be fairly loose. If you want to use your finger to kind of lock it in place a little bit, it just has to sit there for now. Now I'm ready to do this arm. This is the top of the spine and I'm going to take this section of the arms and put it right inside there, like that. Okay, so you can see that our puppet's starting to shape up. Uh, I'm going to bend the arms up just a little bit to make sure that the shoulders line up with the puppet. 
because we don't want it to go beyond the drawing. Okay, now, quick piece of masking tape for the arms. And this will lock that in place. All right, so final step for this first part of making the armature is putting the neck in. Now the neck, again, is just a straight piece, but you can just grab it and do a quick loop. And that loop can kind of tuck right inside. This almost is uh, arbitrary because the epoxy putty is going to uh, kind of lock everything together. But what you're going to do is take that loop and kind of fit it around the spine a little bit, if you can. Uh, now, if you're making other kinds of characters, like a biped or somebody with two heads, all this changes. But this is the basic idea. So I've kind of just wrapped the wire together a little bit, but again, it's just arbitrary because the epoxy putty is going to lock everything together. But what is important, and once I tape this in place, you'll see, now that we have everything taped down, there are some important things you have to make note of. The neck does extend up and through the head at the center point between the shoulders, right where the neck should be. The shoulders of the arms are not wider than the drawing. It fits within the armature. Uh, the arm's length, they're long enough so that we can then shorten and deal with those later on when we do hands. The hips are not wider than the drawing and the crotch doesn't go beyond the crotch of the drawing as well because we want to make sure we don't start gobbling up the length of the legs with an oversized armature. All right, so now we are ready for epoxy. Uh, we've got everything taped down in place. Um, and this is epoxy. This is by a company called Needleite. Um, I can get this through um, McMaster Car. Um, but you can find most epoxy putty at any hardware store. There are some that uh, go off quicker, that are a little harder, that are a little more brittle. Uh, this stuff is uh, very nice. It hardens up fairly quick. Um, and it's easy to use and it doesn't smell too much. So epoxy putty is a two-part system. It comes in A and B, and you'll see that they're different colors. So there's the A, which has kind of an olive drab look to it, and this is a beige color. So uh, you have to figure out how much you need um, for, for using on your puppet. It's important to realize that not only is this stuff kind of expensive, it is um, heavy. So you don't need a lot to tie together your puppet. You want to use as little as possible because the more you use, the heavier your puppet is and the more likely it is to kind of tip over from the weight. So you want to use just enough to put the whole puppet together, all the wires kind of together, um, and not so much that it gets heavy, like I've said. So I've torn up two equal parts and I've kind of rolled them into balls like this. And uh, I've compared the size of the two spheres and to see that they're equal. So it's very important that you have them as equal size because if it's not mixed properly, it will not go off. I also have a little cup of water that I can dip my fingers into because this stuff tends to get a little sticky. So only mix what you need. Don't mix a lot because once it's mixed, it sets up pretty quick and then it's no good. So you want to mix only what you need and I'm thinking that's probably a little too much um, or maybe I'll just keep it. What I'll probably do is just keep this amount. If I have a little bit extra, I could use it on a different puppet. So what I'm going to do is dip my fingers in here and then squish them together. And I'm going to fold them over, fold it over back and forth like this, dipping my fingers every once in a while. Uh, and you'll see that the two colors of the material start to streak together. Okay, so I flatten it over, or flatten it out, and then I curl it and fold it over and then squish it again. So this is a very, very important technique because you don't want little pockets of uncured, um, uh, uncured epoxy because then your puppet won't be very solid or secure. We're going to be using this material again to make the hands and for attaching the feet, which will be in another video. Um, also, the thing is, this stuff, when it's very sharp like this and it dries or sets up, it becomes a very sharp edge that could cut into your wire. So it's important not to have little tendrils like that. Part. So I, I look at my epoxy and I realize, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit more water on there. And I'm going to tear off just a tiny bit. 
And what I want to do is I'm going to smash it into this area where the armature is. So I'm going to put a little dab on there like that, and then I'm just going to push my finger down and until I feel the wire come through. And then I'm going to fold it under just a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about the back side because we can do that in a second, um, a second time. Because what you're going to do is you're going to do this in two parts. This is step one, uh, where I'm using just a tiny bit. And basically what this does is it locks the armature together. Okay. Now, if you're using more than a dime or a quarter size of, our, of this epoxy, you've used too much. Now, that doesn't look like a lot, but this stuff is very, very strong. And don't worry about it looking even yet, because that's not important until later on. So now I'm going to go to the, this area right here, and I'm going to just put a little bit underneath, right there, in between. And put just kind of a snake right in there. And then I'm going to tear a piece off and and I'm going to squish it right in like that. Go and dip your fingers every once in a while. Now it's important that you don't let the epoxy go beyond the bend of this leg, okay? Because that's where the armature is gonna to want to bend when you're doing your walks. So you're kind of just doing the pelvic bone of your character. Um, so it's important not to spread the epoxy out over the wire because as soon as you do that, it mobilizes your character. Um, you just have to make sure that it's getting into the different layers of wire. Now again, it doesn't look like a lot, but it's really gonna work nice. So I wanna make sure that at this point, it doesn't go up into the neck because that's where the head's going to bend, okay? Be careful not to use sharp tools around this. Uh, now, you don't want to go beyond the shoulders either because that's where the arm's going to bend. Same thing with the pelvis. Don't go beyond the bikini line uh, or go eat, eat up into the uh, spine area because wherever this clay goes, it doesn't bend anymore. It's hard. So that's as much as you need. Now, you have to be very careful. Let this sit here uh, and set up. Now, this stuff will set up in an hour if you just let it lay here. If you bring it over and put a warm light on it, it'll go off in 10 minutes and then we could take it to that next step. Okay, so right now I've waited uh, about an hour for this to set up. Uh, and now what you're going to do is remove the, the tape. Um, you'll notice that it'll stick to the paper. So just tear it off. And here we have the armature itself. Now you'll see that the back side has some exposed wire. You can kind of see it right there. Um, what I'm going to do now is mix a mini batch of epoxy and fill in some of those gaps. Uh, and then I'm going to take it to the next step, which will be showing you guys how to do what I call donuts. I've mixed some more epoxy. I was very thorough with it again, using the water, the whole technique we used earlier in the video. Uh, and now what we're going to be doing is doing this section of the armature that are called donuts. So if you look closely at the armature, um, there'll be some areas where the epoxy is kind of sharp. It ends in a point. So when you start moving those wires back and forth, that sharp edge will start cutting into your wires. So in order to, in order to protect your wires, what I do is I create these little soft areas of, of epoxy. So I have some electrical tape. Usually it's black, but I have some green. And I lay a little piece out, and then I carefully use an X-Acto blade, and I cut little slices of it. So I create this tiny little piece right here that are going to go in strategic spots of the armature. So it's going to go on the armature wherever the epoxy is up against. So at the armpits, at the uh, hips, and at the neck. I usually don't worry about the waist very much because you frankly just don't move the spine so much that that becomes an issue. So use the edge of your knife like so, so you don't uh, take away the stickiness of the tape and carefully place it right on the armpit. So just hold down your thumb. Wow, that just pulled the blade out. So um, you're going to have that piece right there and you're going to carefully roll it over. 
So you only really need one or two layers wrapped on that wire. So you can see right there that here and here is where you're going to have the wire. The next piece is going to go here, and then I'm going to put one here and here. Uh, so now you're going to take your epoxy you just mixed, and you're not going to add a lot, but wherever there's exposed wire on the back, you really just kind of need a, a little bit of a covering. And that's just to make sure that your wire doesn't break out of your armature when you start animating your character. So you can see there, it's very exposed, and I'm just going to go in there. And again, not adding a lot, because if you start to look at my armature and my character, so you can see that he it stays within the drawing, not only this way, but, but also this way. So it's not thicker than the drawing, and it's not uh, wider than the drawing. Okay, so now here's the tricky part, and what you're going to be doing is make, taking a little piece of epoxy and you're going to roll it into a, uh, basically a little strip like that. You're going to roll it into a little worm-like shape. And now you're going to be doing the donuts. So what I usually do is I will put this piece right here, and I'm not going to push it down too hard. I'm going to roll it around the epoxy, right? So if you can kind of see it right there, there's just this rounded edge that protects the wire. You can see that the electrical tape comes out a little bit, but it's halfway in the uh, epoxy, okay? I haven't added a lot. Now you could take a small tool. If you want to dip it in water, it works really nice. And what you're going to do is blend the back side of this so that you're not flattening it at all. All you're doing is blending the epoxy into the main part of the body. So here you can see how rounded it is and that it's blended into this part right here. But it's round and soft here. So when you start to move this wire up and down, it's going to go right up against this soft edge and the electrical tape helps protect it. This is all going to be covered. It's going to be a, um, a finished puppet and it's really difficult to make repairs to armatures once they're complete. So by doing all these extra precautions, it just makes your life a lot easier because your, your armature will last for your project. Okay, I'm basically done. Um, I, I used a, a piece of this um, skewer. It's a shish kebab skewer or you could use a dowel rod, but a sculpting tool will work well. Dip it in water and anywhere you need to blend the epoxy, you kind of just roll it in like that. Now I've tried not to add a lot of, of epoxy to this because you don't want to add weight and you don't really need it. This is all about precaution. So I'm going in there and kind of blending the epoxy to itself and uh, it does stick to itself very nicely. So even though the first batch has been set up for a while, this stuff bonds to it really nice. And now always refer back to your drawing to make sure you're not going beyond the confines of, your, of, of the design because you don't want to have your character get too bulky. If you're doing a female form, you definitely don't want to make this um, armature thick. So the more armature you add, the harder it is for you to flesh the character out and get some of the shapes you might want for your character. So uh, that's basically done right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is wait for this to set up and then I'm going to move on to doing the feet.